All right, folks, today we're going to talk about how to tie a necktie. Now, there's actually a couple different ways to tie a necktie. I have a couple different ties here. They're both made of polyester. One is, I'll demonstrate it here against the backdrop, is long and skinny and somewhat pliable in construction. It's made to simulate a wool tie. Then you have one that is thicker and wider in construction and stiffer, has more kind of just substance to it there. And depending on the type of tie you have, can influence what knot you choose, as well as the type of shirt. And I'm wearing a shirt here that when it's buttoned, still leaves uh, quite a lot of space between the points of the collar. See how they kind of spread here? And I'm not going to change shirts for tying purposes in this movie, but imagine it, that there's there are shirts where they kind of end up much closer together and thinner together. That can also influence the type of knot that you choose. So we'll demonstrate the first knot here. The first step tying any knots, pop your collar up, and tie, or as it was, button, this topmost button. One wears a tie with that button, button like so. And this will be the four in hand knot. I'm going to demonstrate it with a thicker tie. It's a good knot for a thick tie because it doesn't take up much material. <clears throat> Standing end, the end that does not move, in this case it happens to be the thin end. Active end, the end that does move, in this case for this knot, it happens to be the wide end. Throughout the film, I'll be referring to left and right as your left and right, not necessarily as you watch this. I'm using the camera screen here as sort of a mirror, and it usually works best to tie your ties with a mirror. I'm going to put the end of this tie somewhere in my general sternum region, somewhere between the top two or three buttons here of the tie. That can vary depending on your torso length and the length of the tie that you have. So they're going to take the active end around to the left of the standing part and cross back behind the standing end to the right sort of a tail here. I'm going to take that back around to the left. Just kind of created that pocket there in front of the tie. Up through my neck loop and then down through that pocket I just created. At this point the knot's essentially tied. You just need to kind of dress it down, snug it down somewhat, and then slide it up the standing end to arrive tied here. Pull your collar down, taking care to make sure that it's folded down evenly all the way around. You present a uniform image there, and the tie is finished. It's hard to see in this video, but with this skinny knot, even with a thicker or wider tie, you end up with some extra space here. It doesn't fill the space between the collar points well, sort of creating that fuller image. It's a good knot, but lacking in that department. To untie this tie, Pull it down the standing part. The tie will simply unknot on its own, kind of smooth out the material there. You'd want to store the tie hung up like so, maybe over a hanger or something. Don't leave it tied to store it. It can damage the material. Now, to take up some of that space between the points with a wider spread shirt as the one I'm wearing, and also to utilize more material in a longer tie, I'll show you the Windsor knot. That was the four in hand first. This is the Windsor. Starts out very similar with that standing in somewhere about those top two or three buttons across the active end, again the wide end, around. And instead of hooking back underneath, we're going to go ahead and wrap our neck loop like so. Now back around to the right. Your right as you're tying it. We're going to hook that neck loop, that side of the neck loop as well, creating this sort of a little heart-shaped V pattern. There you go. And you can see as we're tying this, it's taking up more material, more turns. You're going to use up more of the tie that you have, which again makes it useful for a longer tie. Now I create that pocket in the front here, up through my neck loop, down through that pocket I created, dressing the knot down. And it just creates a broader, flatter, more triangular knot than the four in hand, which sort of made a smooth uh, rectangle of a knot. Dress that knot down, singe not too tightly around the neck. Fold my collar points down. Back around the tie. Double checking in my mirror, I've got uniform coverage there. And you can see that even with 
this thinner material, it takes up that space just as much as that thick tie did, or even a little bit more, making it useful for that spread collar again. Now, to finish any tie, you want that length to end up, that was straight here, right in that point of the belt buckle, like so. This one is a hair short. You might retie it, but honestly, it's just about perfect. Now, in either of the knots that you wanted to retie, you would undo it just the same as that first knot. If you need more length, say your tie was too short, give yourself just a little bit less standing part to begin with. If you need less length, you can do it more, and depending on your torso length, length of your tie, you can end up with two very equal portions. Something very short, just depending. You can experiment. And even if it takes two or three attempts to tie it with the correct length, it really pays off to have the perfect length tie. It's a little weird to have it too short or too long. Give it a tie, store it nicely. And there we have it. Two different ways of tying a necktie.